have landed at Thermal Airport. If you guys don't remember, this is James Lipman. I'll explain more when it's less loud. Okay, the engine is shut down. The reason why I'm here at Thermal with my good friend James Lipman, if you haven't seen our video where we compare helicopters to airplanes, you really should. It was a good one. We're gonna fly around the Salton Sea, and James is a local. He knows a lot more about the Salton Sea and the area than I do, um, though I do have an affinity for it. James, are you excited to see the Salton Sea from a helicopter? Of course I am. I'm always excited to see the Salton Sea from any angle. Damn right. All right, let's see if we can get in the air without pissing off too many uh, fixed wing pilots. Thermal traffic, helicopter force here, whiskey departing direct to the south from Thermal Aviation. Thermal. I said thermal a lot of times there. This is so ridiculously rad. I, I will never, I will never get over that. Before we get too serious about the salt and sea, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor, Flying Eyes Sunglasses. So they're great under a headset because they have a super thin temple. They're very lightweight because they're made of Brazil mud. And look how easy James was able to put on those Flying Eyes sunglasses that I have loaned him. Here's my thing. He talks about Flying Eyes a lot. They are actually quite good. I'm not going to lie. This is a very nice pair of sunglasses. If you're the kind of person who's just uh, taking on aviation and you'd like to treat yourself to something that makes your flying just a little bit nicer to see and hear, click the link in the description below. Uh, you can save 10% using the promo code MICA, Flying Eye Sunglasses. Thanks for wearing those glasses, James. Thank you very much. Can I keep them? Actually, yeah. You want them? <laughs> I don't want to take your sunglasses. I'll, <laughs> I'll use your promo code or something. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much. They are very nice. The Salton Sea is among the most peculiar, beautiful, and frustrating places uh, I've ever been. This valley, the Coachella Valley, there has been a sea here for millennia. The uh, Colorado River, every couple of hundred years, would flow into this valley, and then it would change course and flow into the next valley. So this lake was up and down over, over thousands of years. In the 1900s, a fruit company that I won't name decided this was the perfect environment for growing dates. So this fruit company cut some slots in the Colorado River and diverted a little bit of it this way, except they didn't do a very good job of it. And the slots kind of gave way and most of the Colorado River flowed into this valley for I think three or four years till they got it under control again. And it filled the valley up and they called it the miracle in the desert. And you could go water skiing and fishing and do all this cool stuff in it. It's California's biggest inland water body about the 70s, all the agriculture in the area was leaching pesticides and whatever else, fertilizer, into yeah. the water. There wasn't enough outflow to keep the water fresh, and it started to kill off the fish stock, and then by the, I think, the late 90s, it was a, a what they call California's largest ecological disaster, because what we have now is a receding water line and all of this toxic dust around the edge of it. There's nothing holding it down. The wind picks it up. A significant portion of the kids in this area have respiratory issues because of this thing. You know, no, the kids shouldn't have respiratory issues, and they definitely shouldn't have respiratory issues based on the, on someone mismanaging a body of water. So what you have is a kind of an odd collection of death and like uh, unfulfilled promises. I mean, can, you, can you smell it now? So they would have these like fish die-offs because the uh, the water would become toxic for fish, yeah. and so you have like this um, death stank from a hundred feet up. It looks kind of kind of pretty and intriguing, but uh, the lower you get, the more of that disaster vibe you um, you encounter. I this is a yacht club. Oh, this is the this yacht is club. the yacht club. Look at it, it's like landlocked, right? So oh. come out this way and aim back that way at it, because I mean this place was the place to be back in the 60s, 50s, 60s. If you had a yacht here, it was you know this was a big deal. Oh wow, what a so, cool looking building. Cool yeah. looking building, right? Super cool. And the marina is now completely landlocked because the water's receded so much. So although the people who live here do a good job of keeping that building looking really smart. So yeah. so, so it was formerly a yacht club and now it's kind of a small I think community it's a community center. Yeah. yeah. Kudos to whoever's looking after the yacht club because that is it's a cool building. You can't let that decay. And what you're looking at here is mostly dead fish. Yes. Give you an idea. I mean, off on the left here, that's all obviously sand, but the bit directly underneath us is all fish bones, for the most part. There's some people down here. Wave to them. See if Hello. They can... Hello. Because of the birds down here, people come down here to bird watch. And when you're at ground level, you actually can't see the other side of it. You can see the mountains up in the distance, obviously. It's quite a, um, a visual treat, if yeah. you like.
I don't know specifically, but I imagine this is a fault line because the San Andreas Fault runs all the way through this valley to the Sierra Cortez. I mean, just cracks in the earth, that is one cue. Yeah, and then the, the, tw the twisted pattern, big, obvious I've weirdness. I've never been over this. This is kind of cool looking. This is Bombay Beach up here, and it's one of the uh, more populated little communities. It's got a big art scene. There's, a, I think, a film festival here every year. But it's kind of cool, and they have sculpture on the beach, and the people who live here are into Bombay Beach. It has a vibe. You swing the nose that way, so I've got no, no glass. There Damn you go. This place is a vibe. Can you get uh, shot of this little trellis thing countless. here? Yeah, that's neat. Sweet. You know what I bet? I bet this is uh, Instagrammer's delight. Oh yeah. Oh, there's like a phone booth down there with a satellite dish. I don't know what it means. I love it. It's cool. I see a bird, a little uh, flock of birds. The down algae there. is full of neurotoxins, so it will kill you dead. Is that true? Allegedly, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, we'll stay. Should up we get a here? shot of it? It's kind of cool looking, isn't it? I wonder if you swing round. Absolutely. I mean, it's absolutely outrageous. What you're looking at is pesticides and fertilizers completely out of control. There's a destructive beauty to the place. What a pretty field that is. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm going to shoot through the windshield, which I'm sure is not the way to do this, but that's really cool. Definitely a Paul Smith vibe <laughs> to that. This is the latest salt and sea thing. People have known about lithium under the, under the salt sea for a long, long time. Lithium mining, you have to sort of wash it out the ground with water and then let it evaporate, you know, like they do with salt. It takes a long, long time. They've just worked out a way of extracting lithium from groundwater that doesn't involve doing this, this big evaporation situation. It might be that in the future, a lot of the US's lithium supply comes out of there because there's a lot of it down there. Now, given the kind of broader geopolitical strains uh, currently happening, I could see a real motivation to have uh, more homegrown lithium, yeah. which is a sentence I didn't expect to say when we departed today. Oh. Off the nose, this is the slabs. This is a former Navy base, and uh, it was abandoned. The uh, land is owned by California, but people kind of live here rent-free, and they just kind of uh, have their quiet lives, and that's pretty much the jam. It is really, really neat. Yeah, okay, so this is Salvation Mountain here, and, uh, oh, this is good, there's some people down there, so we'll get a little bit of sense of scale. Uh, and you know, I'm gonna go over the top directly once so we oh, can yeah, get it on yeah. camera, and then I'll just uh, do a couple of laps so you can get some cool pictures. It says, God is love, and there's a lot of, like, um, uh, religious messages and stuff. And then uh, people in green vests, I think, to uh, help keep everybody safe. Oh, and I like this too, the uh, the former, uh, like, uh, what are these, like, oil tanks or something like that? Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, graffiti covered in art and uh, surrounded by debris. This is uh, the slabs. Again, I don't want to place. Yeah, I don't want to bother the people here, but we do want to uh, take a look at Salvation Mountain. It's crazy to think that all of that was created with just like paint. Yeah, leftover paint, I think he is. Yeah, people would come out and donate paint, and then he would slowly just sort of haul it up and. Uh, yeah. Oh, what do we have down here too? I got to take a look at this art over here. I don't. I don't know what this is. I once drove a Pontiac Aztec out here for a, for a job. Did you really? Yeah. And it was a bad Pontiac Aztec as well, like a really nasty one. And I got lost out here at dark. And there's, it's difficult to get out of this place when you can't see where you're going in a car with one headlamp. <laughs> Pontiac Aztec of all things. Yeah. You've done some Americana tours, right? Like you've seen like the um, Cadillac Ranch, that kind of I've thing? I've never seen that. No? Okay, no. well this is that sort of thing. I think we've got vertically stacked cars and maybe a bus over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, the cars. I see what you mean. So I think you have a general vibe of creativity out here that is intriguing. It's also kind of lawless. It's There's absolutely kind of lawless. But the weird thing is it works because I think everyone's on the same page. Yeah, they have an understanding. Which is a great metaphor for what the world should be. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> saying the world should be Slab City. I think that Slab City is definitely its own thing. And I think the people of Slab City want it to be its own thing. It's waving. Hello, matey. There we are. I think it's such a cool place. If you guys are in the uh, Palm Springs area and you're looking to see something uh, fascinating, come over here to uh, Salvation Mountain. Be nice to the locals, won't you? 
Okay, so we're gonna head back over toward the water, although we're gonna be a little bit um, offshore because there are national wildlife ref refuges over there. This is one uh, good, interesting note to end Can on. Get that? What's that? Sorry. What do you want? Sorry, uh, the uh, tractor with the dump. Let's try and get him. That's so neat. So there's agriculture here, there's art, there's uh, an ecological disaster, and <laughs> there is uh, geothermic energy generation. So if you look off the nose here, you can see like some steam uh, emerging. And yeah, I think that's a, a geothermal energy generation plant of some sort. And so this is where they were talking about getting the lithium from, because as the water, as the steam comes up from the ground, it's been deep in the ground where the lithium is and it has lithium in it. So someone, somewhere, worked out a way of extracting the lithium from that water very efficiently. It doesn't take years of evaporation anymore, it takes minutes. Really? And so now, until someone works out a, a better battery than a lithium battery, yeah. we're going to need lots of it. So, you know, you're a long way from anywhere, but this is the place. I feel like that's a pretty good note to start wrapping up on, which is that the Salton Sea, it's a hot mess. Also, it is bubbling with potential, in this case, quite literally. If you guys have a chance, if you're curious about um, one of the odder sections of California, it's worth coming by here and, uh, and checking out. And if you need some lithium, we're working on that too. Yeah, we'll get you some lithium, no more about that. I'm just gonna bank a little to the right, and we're gonna get one last little shot. Ah, birds, birds, birds. Bird. And we're just gonna get one nice view of the Salton Sea. Oh, wow. So cool. What a crazy place this is. James, I'm glad to have you along. You guys, I'm glad to have you along too. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe or hit the like button or whatever you do, or don't. That's fine too. You don't need it. Do what you We're not do. desperate. Do what you gotta do. Yeah. I should mention too, if you guys want to see this photography, there's going to be a link in the description below. And uh, we're just going to include all of like James's pictures because uh, he's a pretty good photographer. And I think you guys might appreciate what they look like. Look, you can see the uh, Blue Angels over there. Oh yeah. Okay, the GoPros are going to run out pretty soon on battery. So I'm just going to keep lapping the, uh, the salt in the sea. We'll take some pictures along the way and uh, have a grand time heading back to Thermal. Thanks guys for watching. Cheers.